people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Troops ordered to kill all Americans who do not turn in guns. The UN Arms Trade Treaty that has been identified by observers as a flagrant threat to the Second Amendment and which Barack Obama is determined to sign has its roots in a 1961 State Department memorandum which explains how the United Nations will oversee complete disarmament of the American people under the ruse of preventing war. The UN Arms Treaty has caused so much controversy because it outlines a plan to target all types of conventional weapons, notably including small arms and light weapons. According to Forbes' Larry Bell, former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. John Bolton also warns that the agreement is trying to act as though this is really just a treaty about international arms trade between nation-states, but there is no doubt that the real agenda here is domestic firearms control. A letter sent last month by 130 Republican House members to President Obama argued that the treaty should be rejected because it infringes on the fundamental, individual right to keep and bear arms. The letter adds that the UNS actions to date indicate that the ATT is likely to pose significant threats to our national security, foreign policy, and economic interests as well as our constitutional rights. Using the rhetoric of the threat posed by terrorists, insurgents and international crime syndicates, the UN is busy trying to imply that all weapons are somehow involved in illegal activity on a global scale and should therefore be controlled and regulated by a global authority. This is precisely the same language used in a 1961 U.S. State Department briefing which outlined a long-term agenda to carry out a program for general and complete disarmament in a peaceful world. Invoking the threat of nuclear warfare, the document spells out a plan to create a United Nations peace force that would enforce the peace as the disarmament process proceeds. While the document initially focuses on scrapping nuclear weapons, it later makes it clear that the only groups allowed to own weapons of any kind would be governing authorities, for the purpose of maintaining internal order, and the UN peacekeeping force itself, which would require agreed manpower. The manufacture of armaments would be prohibited except for those of agreed types and quantities to be used by the UN peace force and those required to maintain internal order. All other armaments would be destroyed or converted to peaceful purposes, states the document. While the memorandum outlines a broader mandate to destroy national sovereignty, eviscerate national armies and institute the UN as the planet's supreme authority with a world army, the document serves as a stark reminder that the plan for the United Nations to oversee the abolition of the Second Amendment has been in the works for decades. As Bell points out in his Forbes article, the threat of the Obama administration relying on a UN treaty to do what successive administrations have tried but failed to accomplish, taking a huge bite out of the Second Amendment, is by no means far-fetched. After all, a plethora of UN treaties and international agreements have already stripped the United States of its sovereignty and its power to decide its own laws. The power to authorize U.S. involvement in wars and conflicts has now been almost completely stripped from Congress and handed to the United Nations. Following Barack Obama's arrogant rebuff of Congress in seeking approval to strike Libya, during which he churlishly remarked, I don't even have to get to the constitutional question, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta affirmed that the U.S. now requires international permission before deciding on its military policy. Other Obama-endorsed union power grabs like the Law of the Sea Treaty Lost as well as Agenda 21 and Sustainable Development are also serving to decimate national sovereignty and remain almost completely under the radar. You only need to look at the European Union, which now crafts around 50% of the laws made in member states like Britain, to understand how unelected global institutions can and have dictated policy on a national level. The UN Arms Trade Treaty presents an existential threat to the guns rights of American citizens and should be rejected for what it is, yet another attempt by the Obama administration, in the aftermath of the Fast and Furious scandal, to abolish the Second Amendment by stealth. Also a newly leaked U.S. Army Military Police Training Manual for Civil Disturbance Operations outlines how military assets are to be used domestically to quell riots confiscate firearms and even kill Americans on U.S. soil during mass civil unrest. Source Related Posts Carrier and dozens of underwater drones towards Iran USS John C. Stannis The U.S. Navy has unexpectedly dispatched a fourth aircraft carrier to the Persian Gulf, 
along with a fleet of underwater drones in what is being considered just the latest move in a series of escalations leading towards a potential war with Iran. The deployment of dozens of small, unmanned submarine-like watercraft was confirmed by the Los Angeles Times this week, which cites military officials speaking on condition of anonymity. This particular type of craft, a manned sea fox submersible, are reported to be sent to the Gulf so that the U.S. military can detect and destroy any mines that may be planted in the waterway by Iranian officials if they escalate efforts to block the Strait of Hormuz, a strategically important narrow stretch of water that exists as an immensely important conduit for any resources being moved in or out of the Middle East. The Times says that the subs, at only 4 feet long and fewer than 100 pounds apiece, can move its speeds up to 6 knots at depths of 300 feet. The price tag is reported to be $100,000 each, which includes an intricate waterproof television camera and a homing sonar system. The U.S. rush ordered a shipment in May in a deal with Germany under the direct of Marine General James Mattis, the top U.S. commander in the Middle East. It is reported that a fleet of Sea Fox subs were deployed overseas several weeks back, but has only been confirmed now. The United States has already sent three massive aircraft carriers to the waterways outside of Iran, including the USS Enterprise, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower and the USS Abraham Lincoln, and will now add the USS John C. Stannis to that fleet in August. Unlike these behemoth ships equipped with billions worth of weaponry and service personnel, America's other new addition to the battlefront is invisible to those on land and can be controlled from anywhere in the world. In the Cold War, Mina sweeping warfare was a large part of what the Navy did, but we have lost a lot of our Mina sweeping capability, Christopher Harmer, a senior analyst at the Institute for the Study of War, tells the Times. The Sea Fox is a relatively simple, off-the-shelf system that we can put off our minesweepers but also any surface ship. Harmer adds to the paper that although Iran has the capabilities of coming through with its threats of closing the strait, the latest addition to the United States Navy would make sure a blockade wouldn't last long. If they wanted to close the Strait of Hormuz, they could do it, but they would only be able to do it one time, he says. The new fleet of Sea Fox subs will accompany two massive aircraft carriers and a collection of F-22 fighter jets that America has already sent towards Iran. When the United States upped its presence in Persian Gulf earlier this year, Defense Secretary Leon Panetta told reporters, we want them to know that we are fully prepared to deal with any contingency and it's better for them to try to deal with us through diplomacy. Source Related Posts U.S. military reveals could plan to topple Obama. A shocking Federal Service for Military Technical Cooperation MTC report redlined President Putin this morning warns that various elements within the U.S. military establishment are actively planning for the overthrow of President Barack Obama prior to the November elections. According to this report, Russian Naval Infantry Forces commanders participating in RIM of the Pacific 2012 RIMPAC International Naval War Games off Hawaii the world's largest multinational maritime exercise this week were told by their U.S. counterparts aboard the USS Port Royal CG-73 that Obama had to be overthrown as he posed the most dangerous threat to the United States since the founding of their nation. U.S. military commanders, this report continues stated that American officers and soldiers, along with elected and appointed federal government officials, all take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic, of which they claim Obama is one due to his overturning of established law and constitutional precedents bringing their country to the brink of all-out civil war. Of particular concern to U.S. military leaders, this report says, is the unprecedented level of debt Obama has added since taking office that threatens the United States with an economic Armageddon the likes of which has never been seen and would force upon the Pentagon massive cuts beginning on January 1, 2013. Important to note is that just hours ago U.S. lawmakers passed a sweeping $606 billion defense bill that exceeds a budget cap and faces a veto threat from Obama for failing to sufficiently rein in spending and puts the Republican Party squarely on the side of those U.S. military forces seeking the president's ouster. When asked by Russian commanders what parts of the American Constitution Obama had violated, this report continues, their U.S. military counterparts listed a number of serious charges that include, 
1. Obama's authorizing the assassination of U.S. citizens without their having charges made against them or being able to defend themselves at trials. 2. Allowing the Central Intelligence Agency CIA to conduct murders on U.S. soil. 3. Allowing the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI to tap the phones, intercept the emails, and in other ways spy upon the American public. 4. Allowing the National Security Agency NSA to conduct against the American people the largest spy operation ever undertaken. 5. Conduct an illegal and unconstitutional war against Libya. 6. Obama's overturning of U.S. laws by executive power without congressional approval. Of the gravest concerns about Obama these U.S. military commanders have, this report says, was his July 6, 2012 executive order giving him total power over all communication systems in the United States, and his May 16, 2012 executive order wherein he outlawed any American citizen from writing or saying Yemeni President Abed Rabo Mansur Hadi was elected to office because he ran unopposed. Both of these executive orders, U.S. military commanders said, strike at the heart of the very essence of what it is be an American and which without the United States would cease to exist. Most ominously for the American people are new reports being leaked by the U.S. military about Obama stating that his mentors, who include those of his inner circle, have long advocated the overthrowing of the Constitution and have openly discussed the eliminating of the estimated 25 million U.S. civilians they believe would oppose them and not be able to be reconditioned in their planned re-education camps. To how Obama would eliminate such a staggering number of armed Americans, this report continues, would be by his unilaterally imposing on his nation the United Nations Small Arms Treaty many experts are warning will be the largest gun grab in U.S. history. Interestingly, this grave report notes that what the U.S. military is planning for Obama they have done before when they planned for the overthrow of President Franklin Roosevelt in 1933 and what is referred to as the business plot. The business plot also known as the plot against FDR and the White House putsch was a political conspiracy in 1933. Retired Marine Corps Major General Smedley Butler warned that wealthy businessmen and bankers were plotting to create a fascist veterans organization and use it in a coup d'etat to overthrow United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt, with Butler as leader of that organization. In 1934, Butler testified to the Special Committee on American Activities Congressional Committee the McCormick-Dickstein Committee on these claims. In the opinion of the committee, these allegations were credible, but no one was ever prosecuted. And, in what can only be described as history making a full circle, the J.P. Morgan banking empire that financed the attempted coup against Roosevelt in 1933 appears to be behind the U.S. military plan to oust Obama too. According to this report, the $5.8 billion trading loss J.P. Morgan reported this past week has been traced by Russian finance experts to a great number of shell companies under the control of former U.S. military officers designed to destabilize the Obama regime creating the pretext for the overthrow of the American president. To who will win this titanic struggle this report doesn't say. But, it does grimly note that where the coup against Roosevelt in 1933 failed, these plotters have had a long time to learn the lessons of their failure making them less likely to fail again. Related Posts 12 NATO oil tankers torched in eastern Afghanistan Firefighters extinguish burning NATO supply oil tankers and goods trucks at a terminal following an overnight attack by gunmen in Quetta on December 9, 2011. Taliban militants have attacked 12 NATO tankers carrying fuel for U.S.-led forces in eastern Afghanistan, Press TV reports. Afghan officials said that one driver was killed and four security guards were injured late on Sunday when the militants set the tankers on fire in Sayyidabad district, Wardnik province. Afghan officials have blamed Taliban for the attack. Taliban spokesman Zabi El Mujahid claimed that the militants have destroyed 25 NATO tankers and killed several drivers as well as security guards. The attack came days after Islamabad agreed to reopen NATO supply routes into Afghanistan and end the bitter months-long standoff with Washington after U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said she was sorry for the death of 24 Pakistani soldiers in the U.S.-led airstrike in November 2011. 
The move has provoked criticism from Pakistani people who poured into the streets across the country to ask the government to close the routes again. Source Related Posts Bomb explosion destroys 22 NATO trucks in Afghanistan. Firefighters try to extinguish a burning NATO supply oil tanker following an attack by gunmen on the outskirts of Quetta, June 19, 2011. A bomb explosion has destroyed 22 U.S.-led NATO trucks carrying supplies for U.S.-led forces in Afghanistan's Samangan province, an Afghan official says. The incident took place on Wednesday after a magnetic bomb placed in a parking lot exploded, setting the supply trucks ablaze. The trucks were parked for a rest stop in a parking lot in Rabatuk area. The vehicles were transporting equipment and fuel to Afghanistan from neighboring Uzbekistan. Last week, one truck driver was killed and four security guards were injured after Taliban militants set 12 NATO tankers on fire in Salyadabad district in Wardik province. The attacks came after Pakistan agreed to reopen NATO supply routes into Afghanistan after U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said she regretted the death of 24 Pakistani soldiers in the U.S.-led airstrike in November 2011. The move, however, has provoked criticism from Pakistani people who poured into the streets across the country to ask the government to close the routes again. Source-related posts One million people join in France waiting for alien spaceship to save them from 2012 doomsday. Hundreds of thousands of believers are flocking to Bugaric, France to be saved from doomsday on December 21, 2012. An alien spaceship will rescue all who are near the sacred Picta Bugaric mountain before the apocalypse hits, the mass media reported. Are you prepared for the end of the world on December 21, 2012? If not, then you might want to join the hundreds of thousands projected to possibly a million of people that are planning on being near the Pyrenean village of Bugaric in France. The area is being dubbed as the modern-day Noah's Ark to the people who think they will be saved from the coming apocalypse on or before December 21st of this year. Thousands of believers weekly are coming into this small town which has a population of only 200 usually. Current estimates are that there are more than 100,000 people already in the area with projections of anywhere from 300,000 to possibly 1 million people coming before the middle of December. So how will these believers be saved from the coming apocalypse you ask? Well, here is where the story gets downright bizarre if it wasn't already. A spaceship S will transport all the people in the area to safety and these survivors will enter a new age with their alien saviors. Anyone who is not in the immediate vicinity of the area will surely perish in the coming apocalypse and the only surviving members of the human race will be the ones aboard the spaceship S. Now the question is why this location? Well, it seems that one mountain in particular is at the heart of the story. That mountain is named Picta Bugaric which happens to be the highest mountain in the Kribir's mountain range. It is also one of the most sacred mountains to New Agers who claim that it actually emits strange magnetic waves. Ever since the 1960s the mountain has been a place where people could tune into different cosmic frequencies according to believers. It is these cosmic frequencies that have convinced the believers that a spaceship lies in wait inside the mountain ready to rescue all of the faithful before doomsday hits. So, are you getting your bags packed yet for Bugaric? Yeah, me neither. I would like to see the hundreds of thousands of people's faces the morning of December 22nd though. At least the mayor of Bugaric has taken the right approach in handling the situation. He has already asked the French authorities to move in their armies in the event of attempted mass suicides when the December 22nd sunrise hits. Source Related Posts Seven Israelis die, dozens injured in Bulgaria bus explosion, Iran accused. Smoke rises from Burgas International Airport in Bulgaria after a bus carrying Israeli tourists exploded at the airport on July 18, 2012. At least seven people have been killed and more than 30 others injured in an explosion on a bus carrying Israeli tourists in the eastern Bulgarian city of Burgas. According to this RT report, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has accused Tehran for the bombing in just two hours after the incident, saying that all signs point to Iran and he has promised in a statement today that there would be an Israeli response, probably meaning more or a terrorist incident involving Iranians. 
Most of the media is also claiming that the incident has not been reported in Iran and an Iranian reaction to the Israeli accusation has not yet been reported, using this as a proof that Iran is guilty. The Daily Mail has also confirmed that Israel has blamed Iran for the attack. A U.S. Michigan driver's license was found on the suicide bomber in the Bulgaria bus bombing that killed the Israeli tourists. It is alleged that the driver's license may be fake. So far the identity of the man remains unknown. The explosion occurred on Wednesday at Burgas International Airport on the Bulgarian Black Sea coast, about 400 kilometers 250 miles east of the Bulgarian capital Sofia, the Israeli Daily Haaretz reported. There are six bodies on the scene, one critically wounded died at the hospital and two seriously injured are in intensive care. Thirty more people are being treated, the Israeli Foreign Ministry announced in a statement. The death toll is expected to rise as more than 40 other people were reportedly on the bus when the incident took place, Bulgarian officials said. The explosion also damaged two nearby buses. According to Israeli officials, the explosion took place as the Israeli tourists from a Tel Aviv Burgas flight were boarding the bus to go to their hotels. No group has claimed responsibility for the blast so far and the cause of the incident is still under investigation. We don't know if it was a terror attack. We do know it was an explosion, said Israeli Foreign Ministry spokesman Paul Herson. The southeastern European country is a popular tourist destination for Israelis. Source related posts HSBC exposed, drug money banking, terror dealings. One of the biggest high street banks, London based HSBC have been caught up in funding terrorism and money laundering for the Mexican drug cartels. HSBC's activities in Saudi Arabia were brought into question in a report, which specifically refers to banking with LRAJHI Bank. The investigation claims the Saudi bank has links to financing terrorism, based on evidence gathered after the September 11 attacks. Investigation suggests one of LRAJHI's founders was an early financial benefactor of Al-Qaeda. HSBC forbade its affiliates from doing business with the Saudi bank in 2005, but this policy was overturned only a few months later when the banks resumed dealings. In addition, the report cites dealings with two Bangladeshi banks thought to have links with terrorist organizations. The probe also details how the bank bypassed safeguards that protect against transactions, potentially involving terrorists, drug lords, and rogue regimes. The Investigations Committee alludes to almost 25,000 transactions to Iran amounting to over $19 billion conducted through the bank's U.S. office over a period of seven years. The bank did not disclose that the funds were being sent to Iran. On top of this it has been established HSBC has been at the center of a narco-banking, money laundering scandal, referring to HSBC's activities in Mexico, highlighting the fact that the country was treated as a long-risk client despite being a known hub for drug trafficking and money laundering. A report gives reference to the banking conglomerate's Mexican affiliate transporting a total of $7 billion in hard cash to HBUS from 2007 to 2008. The sheer quantity of capital transferred raised concerns that some of it came from illegal drug sales in the U.S. The report also implicates the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency OCC, a U.S. financial regulator, for failing to regulate HSBC's activities. The OCC reported multiple failings on the part of HSBC in 2010 to implement anti-money laundering measures namely its failure to monitor $60 trillion in bank transfers and 17,000 account alerts detailing suspicious activity. The official intelligence report lays the blame for HSBC's negligence over the past six years partly at the feet of the OCC for its lack of action in spite of consistent evidence of the bank's money laundering issues. The new report comes after the UK's largest bank revealed it would have to pay a $1 billion fine to US authorities for money laundering offences committed between 2004 and 2010. Source Related Posts HSBC Exposed, Drug Money Banking, Terror Dealings One of the biggest high street banks, London-based HSBC, had been caught up in funding terrorism and money laundering for the Mexican drug cartels. HSBC's activities in Saudi Arabia were brought into question in a report, 
which specifically refers to banking with Al Rajhi Bank. The investigation claims the Saudi bank has links to financing terrorism, based on evidence gathered after the September 11 attacks. Investigation suggests one of Al Rajhi's founders was an early financial benefactor of Al Qaeda. HSBC forbade its affiliates from doing business with the Saudi bank in 2005, but this policy was overturned only a few months later when the banks resumed dealings. In addition, the report cites dealings with two Bangladeshi banks thought to have links with terrorist organizations. The probe also details how the bank bypassed safeguards that protect against transactions, potentially involving terrorists, drug lords, and rogue regimes. The Investigations Committee alludes to almost 25,000 transactions to Iran amounting to over $19 billion conducted through the bank's U.S. office over a period of seven years. The bank did not disclose that the funds were being sent to Iran. On top of this it has been established HSBC has been at the center of a narco-banking, money-laundering scandal, referring to HSBC's activities in Mexico highlighting the fact that the country was treated as a long-risk client despite being a known hub for drug trafficking and money laundering. A report gives reference to the banking conglomerate's Mexican affiliate transporting a total of $7 billion in hard cash to HBUS from 2007 to 2008. The sheer quantity of capital transferred raised concerns that some of it came from illegal drug sales in the U.S. The report also implicates the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency OCC, a U.S. financial regulator, for failing to regulate HSBC's activities. The OCC reported multiple failings on the part of HSBC in 2010 to implement anti-money laundering measures, namely its failure to monitor $60 trillion in bank transfers and 17,000 account alerts detailing suspicious activity. The official intelligence report lays the blame for HSBC's negligence over the past six years partly at the feet of the OCC for its lack of action in spite of consistent evidence of the bank's money laundering issues. The new report comes after the UK's largest bank revealed it would have to pay a $1 billion fine to US authorities for money laundering offences committed between 2004 and 2010. Source Related Posts Mexican protesters slam U.S. arms trade policy. Human rights activists hang a banner on a U.S. embassy fence after placing a plastic tank in front of the building, demanding an arms trade treaty to control weapons commerce between Mexico and the United States, Mexico City, Tuesday. Mexican activists have staged a protest rally in front of the U.S. embassy in the capital Mexico City, criticizing the American government for blocking efforts to ban arms exports. The protesters on Tuesday also called for further efforts to form a binding treaty to control the global weapons market. We demand the treaty includes a clause banning the exportation of weapons and sending weapons to countries where they can be used to violate human rights, where there is a serious risk human rights will be violated and however countries like the United States are defending to not include this clause or that it may be included, but we can, said Daniel Zapico from Amnesty International in Mexico. Obama has to show his commitment to human rights and ensure a rule is introduced to protect human rights without jeopardizing national security, pressure his allies and align himself with the whole of Latin America, Europe and Africa who are asking for a human rights rule within the treaty, Zapico added. Activists say one person dies every minute as a result of armed violence in different parts of the world. Delegates from around the world have gathered in New York to hammer out the first binding treaty to regulate the global weapons market. Most UN member states favor a strong treaty. The US and Russia are main suppliers of the international weapons market, valued at more than 60 billion US dollars a year. Source related posts. Russian church stands up for Brits who were fired for wearing crucifix. The Russian Orthodox Church have involved themselves in the case of helping two British women who lost their jobs for wearing religious symbols at work to the European Court of Human Rights. British Airways check-in clerk Nada Iwida and nurse Shirley Chaplin were both sacked after wearing a crucifix to work the airline told Iwida that the symbol infringed its uniform code. In 2007, British Airways relented and have since allowed the display of religious symbols. Since then she has been lobbying to assign the rights of Christians to wear religious insignia. 
In the other case, Shirley Chaplin was prohibited from working in an Exeter hospital after she would not hide her cross. Both women failed in the English courts which ruled the right to wear crosses was not guaranteed by European human rights law. A spokesman of the Russian Orthodox Church said decision of the British court was alarming in light of Europe's rejection of their native identity especially that such bans do not extend to other confessions says the spokesman of the Russian Orthodox Church. Now the Orthodox Church has put forward a new analysis on the wearing of crucifixes to the European Court of Human Rights which will review the women's case in September. Source Related Posts Syria's top security minister slain in Damascus bombing. Syrian Defense Minister Dioud Raji has Syria's Deputy Defense Minister Asif Shawkat and Security Chief General Hisham Mikhtiar have been killed in a bomb attack on a security building in the capital Damascus. Syrian Defense Minister Dioud Raji was also killed in the bombing at the headquarters of the National Security Bureau on Wednesday. Cabinet ministers and senior security officials were meeting inside the building at the time of the explosion. Many others, including Interior Minister Mohammed Ibrahim al shar were injured in the blast. He is reported to be in a stable condition. Shawkat is President Assad's brother-in-law. He is married to Assad's sister Bushra. The terrorist Free Syrian Army FSA and another armed group, fighting against the Syrian government, had both claimed responsibility for the attack. Some reports suggest that the suspected bomber worked as a bodyguard for the officials. The FSA has warned of more violence in coming days. Meanwhile, the Syrian army has pledged a crushing response following the attack, stressing that Damascus will continue fighting terrorism. The Terrorist Act increases the armed forces' determination to cleanse the country of terrorist groups, the army said in a statement. Source-related posts Government office torched in Israel in support of self-immolated protester Israeli protesters block a highway as they march through the streets of Tel Aviv to protest rising housing costs on July 15, 2012 Israeli protesters have torched a government office in Tel Aviv during a demonstration in solidarity with a man who recently self-immolated to protest against the Israeli economic policies. Over 2,000 Israelis gathered outside the office of National Insurance Institute in Ramat Gan late on Sunday in a show of support for Moshe Silman, who is now fighting for his life due to his serious burns. The fire caused damage to the building's doorway. The protesters also spayed graffiti price tag Moshe Silman on the entrance of the National Insurance Institute, which is blamed for Silman's financial troubles and his attempted suicide. Silman set himself on fire on Saturday during a demonstration to mark the first anniversary of the social justice protests that swept Israel last year. Over 10,000 people took to the streets across Israel to protest against social injustice and high cost of living in Israel. According to Israeli sources, the 57-year-old Silman suffered second and third degree burns on 94% of his body. I could afford medication or rent. I paid millions in taxes. I served in the army and in the reserves until I was 46. I won't be homeless and that is why I am protesting against all the wrongs Israel imposes on people like me," he wrote in a letter left at the site of the incident, adding that Israel robbed me of everything and left me with nothing. Source Related Posts U.S. West Coast to receive dangerous levels of Fukushima radiation it's been over a year since natural disaster ravaged a nuclear plant in Fukushima and interrupted the lives of millions of Japanese. Scientists now fear though that contaminated water is on course to America, and it could be more toxic than thought. Researchers have released the findings of an intense study into the aftermath of last year's Fukushima nuclear disaster and warn that the United States isn't exactly spared just yet. In fact, Scientists now fear that incredibly contaminated ocean waters could be reaching the west coast of the U.S. in a matter of only five years, and the toxicity of those waves could eventually be worse than what was seen in Japan. A team of scientists led by Joke F. Lubeck of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's NOAA Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory have published the findings of an experiment recently conducted to measure the impact of last year's nuclear disaster and the results are eye-opening to say the least. By simulating the spreading of contaminated ocean waters and seeing how currents could carry them across the Pacific from Japan to the U.S., 
scientists believe that the worst might be still on the way. Within one year it will have spread over the entire western half of the North Pacific and in five years we predict it will reach the U.S. West Coast. Klaus Boning, co-author of the study, tells the website Environmental Research Ed. Boning adds that the levels of radiation that hit the U.S. coast will be small relative to the levels released by Fukushima, yet fails to exactly stand by that statement in the fullest. But we cannot estimate accurately what those levels will be because we do not know for certain what was released by Fukushima, the doctor adds. In fact, others fear that contaminated ocean waters may collect in packets and produce waves of highly concentrated nuclear toxins that could pose a dangerous toll to Americans. The paper itself reads, after 10 years the concentrations become nearly homogeneous over the whole Pacific, with higher values in the east, extending along the North American coast with a maximum 1 times 10 4 off Baja California. The magnitude of additional peak radioactivity should drop to values comparable to the pre-Fukushima levels after 6-9 years that is total peak concentrations would then have declined below twice pre-Fukushima levels, it continues. By then the tracer cloud will span almost the entire North Pacific, with peak concentrations off the North American coast an order of magnitude higher than in the Western Pacific. The total peak radioactivity levels would then still be about twice the pre-Fukushima values, the paper's abstract reveals, discussing what long-term impacts The only people who don't want to disclose the truth or people with something to hide. This could come to America's West Coast. Source related posts.